The presenter, a young man wearing a dark blue shirt and black trousers, stands in a bright white open plan room. He holds a mobile phone. Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the season finale of season two of Hidden Treasures, the show where we take you behind the scenes of the Natural History Museum here in London. I'm your host Connor and today we're coming to you from the Angela Marmont Centre for UK Nature which is the hub that provides identification services for the public for them to bring in their specimens to the museum. Now today the format is a little bit different. Instead of taking your questions in the show, uh, our expert scientists will be in the live chat box answering your questions directly in there. So please do keep submitting your questions for our scientists in the live chat box and they'll come to as many as they've got time for before the end of the show. And yes, I did say scientists because today we're actually joined by two experts here. So out here in the Angela Marmont Centre, I'm going to be joining Identification Officer Florin Fenahu, and we'll also be joined by our co-host Josh, who's with botanist John Hunnix, who we met in season one of Hidden Treasures, and they are in the UK Biodiversity Reference Collection, which is right next door. So we'll be heading over to them a bit later in the show, um, after we've explored a bit out here with Florin. Um, but yeah, make sure you get your questions in for our scientists. They'll be answering those in the live chat. But I think it's time that we get started. So if you want to follow me over here, we're going to meet Florin. Connor walks over to a workspace full of books and a computer. He meets Florin. Florin wears a gingham shirt, black trousers and glasses. Uh, just to say that this is a live working area. So there'll be people around working. And we are uh, just over here to meet one person who's working right now, Florin himself. So thank you so much for having us. Hi Connor, thanks for coming here. Thank you. Thanks for taking time out of your very busy day to have us. <laughs> Um, so what is the standard kind of day for you as an identification officer here in the Angela Marmont Centre? I deal with um, public inquiries, so people bring here all sorts of um, natural history items such as insects, plants, spiders, bones, and I have to identify them for the customer. Wow. So you've got to have knowledge about quite a lot of things and using all the collections and all the references here. What a cool job. <laughs> yes, uh, as I say, uh, uh, unlike my many um, you know, curators and other colleagues, I, I'm a generalist, not a specialist. I have I to know it. a bit of insects and plants and others, yeah. That's great. No, that's really unique for this show as well. Um, so you've also prepared a mystery specimen yes. um, that everyone who's watching along will see. An image of the mystery specimen appears on a screen. A furry spider with a black upper body and crimson lower body rests on a white plastic rectangle. Um, so we're not going to reveal it just yet. You'll have to stick around to the end of the show to find out the identity of our mystery specimen. But taking a look at that, some people have already had some guesses. Lots of people are saying that it could be some sort of spider. Don't give anything away, but that's a guess that people have. Lots of people saying that there's, it's got eight legs, so it could mean it's a spider. And then some people saying that it could be a ladybird spider as well. So thank you so much for those guesses. We'll reveal what that is at the end of the show. And if you're watching along uh, when this is going out, then make sure you get your guesses in the live chat box as well. Um, but since we're here at your desk, you mentioned that you identify things that come in from the public. Have you got anything that's come in recently that we could take a look at? Um, yeah, I'll show you a few of the things that came into the mail recently. Great, let's have a look um, at those. That's typical, that's a bone. So it's an inquiry about an wow. actual specimen. Florin takes out a white wavy bone from a padded envelope and hands it to Connor. Of course, with a letter from the customer demanding uh, help for identification of such objects found right. on a beach this time. Oh, wow. Uh, and this is lots from of the these UK? Things. From the UK, from yeah. The UK. We get lots of inquiries of, uh, well, about bones found on the uh, Thames River wow. estuary or on beaches. I wonder um, what that could be from. Yeah. Um, the next one is kind of the same thing, but it's, it's pictures rather than uh, specimens, so... Florin removes two photos of brown bone structures from an envelope. If, if you can see this, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it looks like a... So there's another one. Along. I think this one is better. Ah, uh, yes. See it's a vertebra. Yeah. Um, That's a very nice photo. They've included the ruler, so you can see how big it is. Yes. Uh, that's like an expert yeah. amateur. <laughs> they know what they're looking for. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so... It's actually uh, the, base is, uh, the, the base of a skull. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I can see it now here. Is this a, is mm. this a, a, a bone or a fossil of a bone? I it's think it's recent. I think it's, yeah. Yeah, I think it's not uh, a fossil. 
Yeah, okay. so it's it's my bit. Ben deals with fossils. Okay. I deal with the, what we call life sciences and earth sciences. I'm right. in the life sciences, so I deal with recent or modern stuff. Excellent. Um, Florin produces another photo from a different envelope. And uh, what's this? Uh, yeah, okay, this one is a lizard, but it's exotic and on top of that, it's not a real lizard, it's just oh. a, a toy. It's a photo of a toy of an exotic <laughs> uh, kind of anoli or something like that, iguana. So we get this kind of inquiries. We don't <laughs> encourage people to send these because we, we like to focus on British uh, yes. stuff. This is the Angela Maman Center for UK Nature. So yeah. the UK, British. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So when, when things come in, obviously, we've got some really recent additions here. But what's the, what's the journey for those specimens after they've reached the museum? Where, where can they end up? Well, uh, most of them return to the customer, right. but a few of them are kindly donated oh, by nice. the customers. We keep them right there in what we call the handling collection. I mean, let's go, let's go have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's go sure. have a look. Yeah, so if you just want to follow us over here. They move over to an area with open cupboards displaying various specimens. We'll have a look at that handling collection. Yeah. Um, and so that looks, and so it's all of this has been sent in from the general public and then donated to this handling collection? Yes, wow. I either sent by post or, or brought in here uh, at the door. Yeah. Um, we have a host of such things. Florin bends down and picks up a large light brown curved specimen. Um, let me just Yeah, it'd be one. really cool to uh, take a closer look at I like this big one. I encourage people, especially when you have families with children, to actually touch these things. This yeah. is a handling collection. Handle this. Hold it. I hold it. Feel it. Um, try to play the game. It's be, really heavy. Be the identification and advisory officer and try to identify <laughs> it. Um, I mean, if you cannot Is this say wood? the name of us, uh, it's not wood. Um, mm. How do you feel it? Is it heavy or it's not? It's very, very heavy, okay. but it's smooth. Mm. Um, it's got this kind of textured, like brown surface. But then I also noticed that there's some kind of whiter, like lighter parts as well. Yes. Is this? Is this like a, a bone, maybe? It's, it's so heavy, though. It's not a bone, but you're closer. It's a, a type of tooth. And, and the layered a aspect of it uh, made you think of wood, which is bright, yeah. but this is different. This is a tusk. A tusk? OK, wow. And is this from a UK species, a tusk? It's a UK species, okay. we think, 20,000 years ago. Is it, a, is it a mammoth? It's a mammoth. Okay. Bingo, yeah, you yes. got it. <laughs> so this is a woolly mammoth tusk. Uh, we find these sometimes uh, um, in rivers or even on, um, on, on the seashore, wow. uh, brought by rivers. They're constantly uh, brought up to the surface uh, by the moving uh, elements. This is incredible. Um, I can't so believe I'm holding a mammoth tusk. This is so cool. And so people can kind of come in and handle these specimens themselves as well. Yes. Right. Yes. Fantastic. It's, it's one of the attraction points. Let me put it back. Yeah, because yeah. I pop that one back. Others. I don't want to drop that one. Yeah, it'd be know, great to see uh, some other things. So this, so someone, someone found this and sent this into the museum. Imagine finding a mammoth yeah. tusk. That's incredible. We have more. We have another one just wow. like this behind this. We have yeah. this tooth which belonged to a mammoth. Florin grabs the large, thick white mammoth tooth from a small table behind him. Um, this is the grinding side. This is what you would see. This is the crown, as we see. Right, as you yeah. say. Right, and the rest is just um, the root, the one, uh, the, the the part of the tooth that is hidden yeah. uh, in in the jawbone. But this is a baby uh, mammoth. This is from uh, a baby a mammoth, young, uh, and a it's young this one. big yeah. already. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's incredible. And this this looks a bit like a like for for, for if you're thinking about human teeth, a bit like a molar. It's a very molar. Very flat. That's what they have. The elephants. They have big molars and tusks. They don't need other uh, oh, teeth. Wow. Um, and this one looks particularly. Um, close to an Indian elephant right. um, in, 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 the, in the pattern here. So Indian elephants are close relatives to the woolly mammoths. Wow, that's incredible. And it, it, it's, it's amazing to, to, to hear that these are being discovered in the UK as well, is it? Yeah. So the mammoths used to live in the UK. What, were there other things that used to live in the UK from the similar time that were also big? Sure, we, we got um, uh, woolly rhino. Woolly uh, rhino? <laughs> uh, I think it was a humerus. We didn't know what right. it was. Sometimes we don't know. We cannot tell here, just uh, me and Ben. Yeah. We go to the experts, and the experts gathered in that case, and one of them identified it as a woolly rhino uh, humerus. And uh, yeah, we have these uh, fantastic uh, mysteries to, wow. to solve. And some of them end up here. Um, here's a piece of bone uh, yeah. from a dinosaur. 
oh, it's wow. still kind of a mystery because we don't know if it's a small bone uh, from a large dinosaur or a large bone from a, a small dinosaur. Connor holds a small cylindrical black bone. Yeah, if you imagine this could be part of my uh, radius, if yeah. I was a dinosaur, um, like a small dinosaur, or part of a finger bone, you know, right. for a larger dinosaur. For, for like the dinosaur. one that left this uh, uh, trace, wow. this is um, a trace fossil. Let's have a look at this one. Here. Yeah, oh, I'll hand Oh, that one you. lifts up, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> this is the, the positive cast of a footprint of an um, iguanodon type. Um, right. dinosaur. Lauren holds the brown cast. The footprint has a triangle sole and three widely spread pointed toes. We've we've talked about Iguanodon in previous episodes of Hidden Treasures. We know that that one has been discovered in the UK. Yeah. yeah. And this is not an inquiry actually. We, we, we got it from our colleagues in paleontology. But we have lots of really cool inquiries wow. here. Uh, people who brought in specimens um, loads and loads of fossils. I don't even know where to begin. I Bones. Mean, yeah. I mean I, I have also spotted this up here. Oh. <laughs> what is that? Connor points to a specimen in a jar preserved in clear spirit. The extraterrestrial baby. It's yeah. an actual inquiry. I got this in 2012. I was, uh, you know, early in my job. Yeah. And someone found it in a pub. Uh, they were the new owners. <laughs> and they thought, bingo, I got this a magnificent creature yeah. in a jar. It's a toy. It's a souvenir object from the X-Files uh, TV series and right. it ended up here. <laughs> they didn't want it back. No. <laughs> so here's the inquiry from 2012. Wow. Remember. We get these inquiries, we get these funny inquiries sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. I suppose that, you know, we've had a look at some of the uh, collections in spirit jars here at the museum and it does mm -hmm. look like it's preserved in yes. a similar way. So I can see why someone might be confused by that, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about some of these up here. Like this, this one here, is this one from the UK? No, it's not UK. As I said, sometimes we do have inquiries about objects yeah. found elsewhere. Florin grabs a large grey white seashell from the shelf. Um, this was found in the UK, but in, in the home of someone or in the garden, I, I forgot which. Uh, we get these things, sometimes uh, you know, tourist souvenirs from grandma or who knows how they end up. Uh, bones from some circus animals uh, or, you know, taxidermy animals, uh, like the, the famous uh, leopard skull right. the, years and years ago. So we get these things. Uh, this is, um, um, I think it's an Indian Ocean uh, species. Right. Um, I'm not an expert, but... Uh, we were with um, um, we, John we, Ablett in the Mollusk Collection recently, so that yeah. looks like it could be like one of the shells that he It's an alien. Uh, let me show you an extraterrestrial, a real extraterrestrial, yeah. right? Coming from the asteroid belt between oh, wow. Mars and Jupiter. This is a real meteorite. Wow. Florin hands a small triangular meteorite to Connor. Um, meteorites are rare, and um, although we have lots and lots of inquiries about meteorites, most of the inquiries uh, turn out to be meteor wrongs, what they call it. <laughs> the things that are not meteorites, I'll show you one just to compare with this. Yeah. This is a, what we call a meteor wrong. It's round in shape, it has <laughs> bubbles, it has melting um, um, signs. So it's a piece of slug, an industrial by byproduct. Uh, uh, compared to this one, this has a fusion crust. If you uh, look at the cut part, you can see the, um, the chondrules which are flex of iron, that's the real thing, and this is not. Wow, that's but, incredible. Because um, yeah. that, that's, that's amazing, I'm holding a meteorite, fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. This came so a long way. Hidden treasures first, yeah. That's um, right. So that's come a long way, and then of course we've got things from the UK, Yes. Uh, but we've also got uh, the UK reference collection, which is next door. So right now we've got our co-host Josh and botanist John Hunnix, who are next door, It'd be great to go over to them um, and explore those collections uh, and see what those, those secrets hold in there. So we're going to go over to them now. Josh wearing a green cardigan and John wearing a black chile stand in front of a table furnished with a microscope and some specimens from the reference collection. A display box in front of John shows a variety of winged insects preserved inside. In front of Josh, some botanical specimens are laid out on whiteboards with their dried foliage extended. Hello, thanks Connor. We are here in the UK's main national herbarium where we are joined by one of the museum's plant experts, John Hunnix. Mark Goff and Josh. Um, Josh hello, gentlemen. Um, can we first of all talk us through a little bit about who you are and what you do? Uh, well, the thanks Josh. I'm basically, I have the great privilege of being one of the curators here in the herbarium. 
um, which is part of um, the AM, uh, Angel Marmot Centre for UK Nature. Um, basically, my, my job is to really look after this incredible collection of plants from the British Isles and Ireland. Um, very significant specimen here, Samuel Dale. Um, Dale's very significant in that he starts putting dates and locations um, on his specimens. Mm -hmm. That enables us to see a spread through time. John points to the botanical specimen in front of Josh. Right, okay. Um, and it, this specimen is dated 1715. That's amazing. 1715 from Waltham Abbey. Wow. That's so really, that's, yes, how, so, that, so that's, what, that's 300 years old? Yes, indeed, yes. That's extraordinary. Yes, indeed, yes. I think the earliest one we've got is something 1698. Well, okay. Um, and, um, but the, the significance here is that they were starting to yes, label where and when yes, it was. Indeed. So you can start so, to then build up a picture. Yes, indeed. Basically. You can see, um, you can build up a picture of how that environment has changed mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. time. Particularly the UK being the first industrial nation, mm -hmm. effective industrialisation, etc. Um, and what specifically is this plant that we're looking this at? This is um, what's called water plantain, um, Anisima lanceolatum. Um, really quite a quite common plant in, in, in slow water, slow of still, still water. Mm -hmm. um, the collection itself ranges right up to um, pretty contemporary stuff. Um, this is David Dupree's collection. Dupree's very interesting in that um, basically he, since 1981, the Countryside Act, um, you really have to get permits to collect yeah. everything. Dupree went out and got permits and uh, his collection is very significant. We took this in a few years ago. So again, we, we, at the moment, we're looking to see what's out there. Mm -hmm. So we can map how Things the flora are have changed. And is that changes in relation, not just obviously to, for example, as you mentioned, like industrialization, but also things like climate change? Yes, indeed, like yes. And you can sort of see how the distribution of plants yes. is changing. And, and yes, indeed, yes. Um, our, low, our warmer species moving north. Exactly. That's really interesting. Warmer uh, species from warmer climates moving north. Yes. Um, and you mentioned just then, it's uh, probably quite important to note as well, that you need permits to go out and do this sort of Very much so, yes. So if anyone permits. is thinking about doing it themselves, these are yes. things that need to be built very much. Yes, yeah. yes. It's really, um, you have to be very careful what you collect. Um, you, um, not so, uh, a lot of species now proceed legal protection, and um, it's especially if you've gone to uh, sites of um, uh, special scientific interest. So, for example, this you were <coughs> saying a bit earlier, this is from a chalk grassland. Yes, which indeed. Are yes. Sort, of, sort of very, really much so. Yeah. Yeah. Sort yeah. of endangered and protected. Yeah. Environments. I, yeah. I'd say be very, very careful. Don't collect things. Take photographs rather than collecting. That's what I'd say. It's definitely the best way of doing it. Um, and you can still do a lot of identifying with you can yes, through photographs, yes. aren't you? Yes, you know, there's yes. things like um, various apps and stuff where yes. it's still... Not exactly ideal, but you know, as I say, you, you can take out a field it. book and, yeah, and make, exactly. notes in the, um, make notes actually in the field. Take, there's lots of excellent field guides where you can, you can take out their hand, you can hold them in your hands there. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> and sort of, sort of building on that, obviously people are um can go out and document what they see and things and that's one of the sort of um, amazing things about here at the amc isn't it you can um document what you see around where you are and then you can come to places yes, like this and, and look <clears throat> at reference specimens. yes indeed very much so that's the that's the um that's the role of a herbarium mm -hmm. basically people can come in and um take uh, uh bring in um information specimens and uh basically compare them we say, well, at the moment we say, don't, not, not specimens, but information. Exactly, pictures and drawings and things like that. Right, so. um, and you mentioned earlier that this is obviously one of the biggest UK national herbariums. Yes, indeed. Um, how many specimens? Uh, I'd say personally with bound volumes, I think we'll weigh over 800,000. 800,000. I'd like to think pushing on for a million. Wow. We, we, it's a huge task. We've yet to document everything. Oh. We've yet to catch um, and that represents how many species? Do we think? Um, well, native um, about four thousand five hundred species. Um, that they are UK species. They grow in the UK. Um, I think there's there's very very few what are called endemics. Mm -hmm. 
There's one endemic uh, that uh, one of our... Uh, what do we mean by endemic? Only grows in a certain okay. place. We, we think we've found one, Hyracium atenborgainum, appropriately, um, that grows up in um, uh, mountains in Wales. Well. Um, that may have arisen through hybridisation because that is possible with plants. Mm -hmm. But um, only about, other than that, it's about 13 we know of. They're mostly mosses from the, from the Scottish Isles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and obviously it's not just the plants that we have yes, in these collections that people can come and see. Josh slides over more specimens in white boxes containing a rat and mice, three small animal skulls and a variety of eggs. There's also um, a whole wealth of other specimens that people are able to um, to request to come and see and to um, check out for research and things like that. So there's things like, you know, mammals, mammals yes. um, bird eggs. Bird eggs. Um, um, there's also um, yeah. insects as well, yes. isn't there? And These are actually they're not UK and species. Then, they're they're very big. Um, biggest beetle yeah, I think we got a stag them. beetle. Um, Amazing. These are really quite exotic from overseas. Um, from the areas of UK biodiversity, and three um, artists are very fond of these sort of things. It's, uh... Yeah, I was going to ask you about this because obviously we have mm. um, a lot of researchers coming in to look at a lot of these specimens and what they found. Um, but it's not just researchers who, who do yes. come in or can come mm -hmm. in, is it? Yes, any member of the public can come in. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of artists, we get a lot of artists coming mm -hmm. in. Josh um, holds up the display box in front of John. I mean, that's really amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I think absolutely. it's it's. Um, it's that sort of ability, that sort of openness of the collections, I mm. guess, that anyone who yes, has indeed, yes. a reason to want to see some of these beautiful specimens. Yeah, can um, actually come. Yeah, can actually request to come yeah, in. That's, that's what a museum is about, you get, uh, providing access to... To what you see in front of you, exactly. Um, and some of the objects are genuinely just like so beautiful. Yes, <laughs> indeed, very much so. I mean, my favourite are these bird eggs, but yeah, um, I uh, might have to count them before they go back. Yes, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a very exotic as well as, as beautiful. Um, thank you so much for that. Well, thank um, you, George. And for your time showing us a sort of very small snapshot of what we have in the collections. Um, so uh, back to you, Connor. Connor and Florin now stand in a study area with photo stackers, computers and microscopes on one side and angled observation desks on the other. On the observation desks, wooden display boxes have been set out with a vast quantity of labelled beetles, butterflies and other insects assembled inside them. And we're back. Um, so, we heard a lot about what's in the reference collection just then and what people use them for. And actually, um, we were down here live a few weeks ago in which we met an artist, Odile, who was working on some of the collections here, which was really nice. So, if you missed that episode, please do go back on our YouTube channel and, and catch that one. But, Florin, um, where are we now? <laughs> what part of the AMC is this? This is the AMC study area where right. you can come and run your project, say a school project or retirement project, whatever uh, in involves uh, UK nature. Uh, you could start a new hobby on identifying butterflies Amazing. or photographing uh, whatever creatures in this uh, part of the world. We have the photo stackers for you. We have microscopes, the books to identify things. We have the reference collection, I know it's there, but we bring here those drawers you need for your projects, right. uh, like these here, and you can use the books and the reference collection to identify your material, and then the imaging um, machines to, to take your, um, you know, images details. home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. So I, I've got to ask, how, how can people uh, book time to, to come here? Uh, it's just by email. Okay. Um, you email amc-booking at nhm.ac.uk um, to see if we have availability. Yep. Right now, both sectors are free today, so we could have had two people working here. Amazing, that's great. So yeah, not included with the free general admission, but yeah, you can book online in advance by email. Um, but we also have these reference collections here as well. Um, so if we want to take a closer look at some of these, what are some of the things that we've got here? Uh, here we have a few samples of this uh, collection we, we present to people. This is a good example of our reference collection, which is uh, kept there. We have two types of things, big, showy, easy to identify groups like the carabidio or ground beetles, and very small and almost identical species like in the rove beetle family, Staphylinidae. Mm. This is the group for which you need 
this reference collection the most. Right. You cannot do identification. With a book like this, Yes. and um, with a good camera, you can identify carabide or yeah. ground beaters. But for the Staffelinide or uh, rove beaters, you have to visit the museum or other institutions where they have such collections. Look at these, how small they are. So small. And how um, close they look to each other. Yeah. So um, that's why this is the place to be if you dig deep into such difficult groups. Mm, yeah, those look very, very hard to identify. But we've also got some things that might be sure, a more, bit easier, but yeah. or they still have trickiness as well, I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> we have unidentified beautiful exotic specimens for the artists, yeah. um, textile designers and so on. They want to see colors, textures. We have um, like a school, uh, um, the drawer with different types of insects wow. just to introduce to groups like the difference between um, a bee and a wasp and a fly and so on. So this is a general insectarium or presentation uh, yeah. display. Um, These are we really have, gorgeous. yeah, um, more example of the real, again, easy to identify moths, like yes. these are the hawk moths and not so easy to identify as these micro moths. Right. Very difficult, those, yeah. but we have the material. So you've got lots of them in one box. Are those all the same species, different variations? Or? Each small box contains one species. Yes. That's what we call a unit tray, which okay. holds one species. Yeah. It's, it's the same here, but of course the boxes are much bigger there. Yeah. And I like that you've also got the caterpillar and the, the cocoon as well. Yeah, yeah. because this is a learning um, collection. We, we show uh, the male, the female, maybe some variations, and also the larva and the pupa, so that people can get an idea and um, some help to identify those species. Amazing. And so in, in the AMC here, we're obviously dealing a lot with UK nature and projects surrounding UK nature. Um, I know there's also um, a drive to digitize the collection as well. Is, this, mm. is much of that work going on in here? when it comes to UK nature? Yeah, we keep all the work done by our visitors. They often digitize um, these uh, specimens, even if this is not their main concern. Yeah. They have a project, but we keep the photos. And there are people in the museum who digitize continuously uh, specimens, in, in particular the most important scientifically, to right. make them available. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we're coming towards the end of our time here. Are there any kind of last specimens that you'd like to show the general public here today? Um, do you mean the mystery specimen oh, or before that? We can also look at the mystery uh, specimen, but anything else here? <laughs> just to show you an example of a tray that we yeah. have in the mammal collection. So British mammals, this is a domestic animal. Actually. In the tray are different brown bones and skull of the ram. It's a, it's a ram. It's a male sheep, oh, wow, yeah. um, but it's an almost complete skeleton. It's very useful um, to help people identify many other things. Uh, you know, having the, these bones mm. in, in front of you, being able to handle and turn them and compare them side by side will help you understand the anatomy of a mammal and therefore you can identify many other things Amazing. on your own. Wow, that's fantastic. So yeah, you can kind of, this, the skills and the things you observe on here, you can transfer to other things that you find. That's really cool. Um, shall we take a look at the mystery specimen then? Yes. Okay, so we've got it right here. Um, so we had a few guesses through, guessing it was a spider that you mentioned it might have eight legs. I'm seeing, yep, there does seem to be eight legs. Can you reveal what this is? Not completely. Oh, okay. This is still <laughs> a, a mystery. That's why I chose this one. Yes, people are right. Eight legs, it's a spider. Given the color and the pattern, it's one of those ladybird spiders, genus Eresus. Right. It's labeled in our collection as Eresus chinabarinus. Since then, the species has split. Um, the species found in the UK, reintroduced by the RSPB, is probably uh, Sandaliatus. It doesn't matter. This is not that. We don't know what it is. We had an expert coming here a few years ago. He looked at it, he took it in the lab, he checked for uh, any signs of uh, tampering. It's not painted, um, nothing made sense. He came back two years later, he checked it again. He thinks it's a species from the Middle East, maybe from Lebanon, uh, but uh, and even uh, maybe a species undescribed to science. Maybe not, maybe it's Moravicus, which is found in, in Southern Europe or Central Europe, we don't know yet. It's still a mystery. We know the genus, but not the exact species. Wow, okay, there we go. What a way 
to end this season of Hidden Treasures, we have a mystery session that is quite literally a mystery specimen. Yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. That's awesome. And yeah, who knows, maybe in the future this will have an identity and we can share that with everyone when we find out. Um, so. But well done to everyone who were guessing uh, Ladybird Spider. They were along the right track. Yeah. So, um, yeah, very nice. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think with that, um, we'll probably end it here. Thank you so much for having us, Florian. It's My been pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for coming here, and I invite people to use our um, services here. Great. Thank you so much. I'll leave you to get on with the rest of your work. Thank you. And, uh, well, thank you so much, everyone, who tuned in for today's episode and for the entirety of Season 2 of Hidden Treasures. Um, and season one as well. We've really enjoyed taking you behind the scenes of the Natural History Museum this year as well as last year. And if you missed any episodes, you can catch up with those on the playlist on our YouTube channel where you can find all of our previous episodes. Now, uh, let us know what you think of Hidden Treasures. Let us know in a live chat and also the comments down below so we can continue to bring you what you'd like to see. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel as well because we're putting out content other than Hidden Treasures as well that you'll really want to see. So make sure you subscribe to the Natural History Museum YouTube channel and hit the bell notification icon too. Make sure that you follow us on our socials, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok and let us know what you think of Hidden Treasures and what you'd like to see more of again in the future. And once again, if you've missed any previous episodes from this season or last season, it's all on the YouTube channel. But thank you so much for joining us for this season. And until next time, I'll see you then. Credits are displayed on the left-hand side of the screen. Scientists, Florin Fenneru, John Hunnox, presenters Connor O'Keefe, Josh Davis, film Lizzie Tilly, Lee Quinn, Karma Hawkes, Edward Taylor, Duncan Gregory, Content and Marketing, Emily Osterloff, Hannah Reynolds. Text at the bottom reads, Copyright owned by the trustees of the Natural History Museum London. On the right-hand side, the Natural History Museum logo is displayed.